Mesh artifacts are one of the most annoying things you're going to run into with polygon based hard surface modeling and if you don't know how to fix them you're going to get really frustrated and want to give up but they're actually incredibly easy to take care of and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Now the reason I'm making this video is because we just recently upgraded our topology handbook to the topology handbook 2.0. So we originally released that two years ago. We just overhauled it. It's completely free and there's a lot of new up to date information in there. So I would highly recommend after watching this video, you take a look at that. It's free. It's on our website and is going to be very useful for your hard surface modeling. So there's a link to that in the top of the description. Now, I want to show you a pretty common situation that should make a lot of sense. So let's say I have a cylinder and you know the drill usually will just, you know, let's say I want to cut a hole in here. We'll do that. And then usually when we want to cut a hole, we also want to clean up this nasty shading. So the way I do that usually is to add some isolation loops and then do the same thing on the actual cutter. So the shading is also clean on the inside. And now we have pretty clean shading and the point of this video is to show you how to deal with the mesh artifacts. So if I were to run a bevel, notice we get these really nasty mesh artifacts. There are three different solutions to fixing this. The first one is the one I would never recommend because it's slow, it's tedious, and it is not a good use of your time. So um, what you could do using it, doing it the manual way is you could actually come in here and if we take a look, um, let's kind of see what's happening here first. So before we even take care of this, the reason these mesh artifacts are occurring in the first place is because this bevel we've added begins to overlap with the surrounding geometry. So notice right here, this vertex, as I make the bevel bigger and bigger, right about there it starts overlapping. And that causes these really nasty shading artifacts because the geometry is overlapping. So to fix that, we simply have to slide that geometry out of the way. So usually we just take the vertices, we kind of slide them out of the way like this. And most of the time that's going to fix those problems. You might also have to do that on the inside here. Um, so usually what I would do is I would simply just apply the Boolean. Then we just kind of come in here and slide these out of the way as well. So slide. So basically every single vertex that we have encroaching on the bevel, we have to slide out of the way. And you can see how tedious this could be doing this all the way around every single time. And for that reason, I would not recommend the solution. Now the second solution is one that I would actually recommend and use a lot, and it is using the bevel shader. So instead of using a physical bevel, we can use a procedural bevel, okay? So what we do is we add a new material, and if we make sure we're in cycles and go into rendering mode, Maybe add in some lights here so we can see it. Right now we don't have any sort of bevels. So to add that procedurally, we just drag out a new panel and go to the shader editor. And if I press shift A and add in a bevel, I can connect this up to the bevel or the principled shader here. So normal to normal. And what that does is it adds this fake shadow, which looks like a bevel. So if I change the radius to like 0.02, notice it, actually let me turn on num lock. There we go. So if I set that, if I set that to 0.02, you're going to see we have this really, really tiny looking bevel, although the bevel is not actually real. So regardless of the actual topology here, I could make this bevel really big procedurally or really small. Now there are limitations to this. You can't make the radius too big or it simply looks fake. So the, you know, the best way to do it is just to hold shift and kind of see, you know, which size looks real because if you really zoom in, you'll still see that hard edge, but you know the lower ones really kind of mask it. So the um, procedural bevel is a really good way to do it to avoid those mesh artifacts, and I use it all the time. And best of all, if I make this like really metallic, maybe a bit darker, and drop the roughness, you can see that we have this beautiful you know, edge highlight around here. So if I were to remove this, we don't have that anymore. So very, very powerful feature. Now the third way we would take care of this using an actual bevel um, modifier here is to use the offset cut feature in Mesh Machine. I've mentioned this so many times in previous videos, but I'll show it again. So if you have Mesh Machine, you can select an edge and then alt click that same edge. And as long as you have that turned on in the experimental features, so right here you have experimental features turned on, you can press the Y key, run a really small offset cut, That'll give you enough buffer right around here 
to add in your bevel. So, you know, just like this, that should give you enough buffer to actually add in your physical bevel, no problem. So these are the two main ways that I um, fix the mesh artifacts. I either use the shader or I use an offset cut. So one of the two. Now, in terms of these nasty shading problems we have on the outside, you can kind of see that. I won't show you how to fix that in this video because it's all contained in the new topology handbook release. And like I said, that's free, so just pick it up. There's a link in the description to that. I'm not gonna waste my time discussing that in this video because it's all in there. So I wanna show you two additional ways, a little bit of a bonus here. So two additional ways you could do this is you could just use Quad Remesher, which is a pretty pricey add-on, but um, in just one click, it'll completely remesh it, and then you could run like a sub D or something turn off your auto smooth and there you go and one other way you could do this is to actually use a CAD software and then import it into Blender now considering tools like Mesh Machine are very cheap like 40 bucks and considering that the bevel shader built into Blender is well free this uh, his solution wouldn't make too much sense because CAD softwares can be in the thousands of dollars but uh, Moi 3D is like 300 bucks but I'll show you anyways what you could do is use a software like Moi 3D. We'll make a cylinder, drag that up, and then maybe we'll go into, um, let's go into front view and then add in another cylinder. We go into the side view and move it over. And what we could do is we could basically do the same exact thing in a CAD software where we're not gonna have those types of problems. So we could run a Boolean like that very easy and then I could actually add the bevel in here manually so we'll add in a fillet very small like that could do the same thing on this side if I wanted to just a very small fillet like that and then what I could do is export it so what I could do is export as an FBX just name it whatever you want and then the output is going to be n-gons here so we'll choose that then I'll just make the resolution like super high you don't want to go too low, it'll look bad, but we can go something like that. Click on OK and then just import it into Blender. So just go to import and we'll just import that into Blender, kind of scale it up. And basically you're going to have um, the same exact result, no shading problems, no artifacts. The only issue is the bevel is actually going to be applied. It's going to be baked in. So this is why I wouldn't really recommend exporting from a CAD software because it doesn't really make too much sense unless the model's like super super intricate and you have to use it but I guess those are technically five ways that you could deal with uh, mesh artifacts on your models so the two ways that I use 99% of the time are the bevel shader and the offset cut feature those are the only two you're gonna really ever need to use in terms of fixing those mesh artifacts in pretty much any situation so like I said, our new topology handbook goes into way more detail regarding various topology situations, issues you might run into, and all sorts of things. So if you haven't picked that up yet, we just completely updated the content and everything in there is free. So check it out. There's a link to that in the description, and I really think you'll enjoy it. So thanks for watching. Hope this video helped you out, and I'll see you in the next one.